And we are back for another Dame by Local member feature. And today we're going to talk to Darren from Rutabaga. Darren, how are you this morning? Good. Real good. Thanks. Um, looks like a nice sunny day out, which is great. I know we're expecting some rain later, but uh, that's okay. Um, you are in the business of all weather activities, right? So tell us a little bit about Rutabaga and what the store is all about. Uh, so Rutabaga Paddle Sports um, is kind of misleading. We are a paddle sports shop. We do mostly canoes, kayaks paddle sports gear, stand-up paddle board, things like that. Um, But we kind of pivot a little bit in the winter and uh, do a lot of winter clothing, Uh, snowshoes. That's kind of our big thing is we love doing snowshoes. Um, We're all snowshoers and I actually build custom snowshoes. So it's a passion of ours. What goes into that building custom snowshoes? Um, Weaving, uh, a lot of of weaving, uh, a lot of shaping. you want to see them? Yeah, I I mean, I've never snowshoed, but I've I think they look cool and I would imagine it's yeah. quite a process to do it. <laughs> yeah, well. I'm going to run downstairs real quick. Okay, we're going to go live. Let's go live, right? Um, <laughs> I, I'll show people your website in the meantime as you're traveling. Okay. That's great. Cool. Uh, let's see. Yeah. So you click on snowshoes, you'll see snowshoes. Um Let's see. Let's check them out on here. Yeah, I was curious because I'm, you know, like you said, the the name Rutabaga Paddle Sports, and I'm like, what what is the business like in the winter, and what do you guys do? So this is really cool to see, you know, that you found your your winter niche, kind of what you focus on in the winter time. And I know you have guys have a lot of great clothes, like you mentioned. Um, so I want to get back to that in a little bit too. Once we, yeah, we we used to say in the winter time we just freeze in the dark, and <laughs> we decided that was boring. <laughs> and not much fun so um let's see how long have you been uh how long have you been the owner of the store right because the, the store has been around a little bit longer than you've owned correct correctly yeah i, I started working there in 1990 and then uh, 2002 is when i started uh huh? okay 2002 is <laughs> when i started um uh, working uh, or buying, I bought them out in 2002. I started working there in 90. So, um, so I've, wow. been, I've been there for a while. Wow. Um, this is my, my shop. Um, <laughs> and uh, my, so this is a pair that's done. Um, there, this is pair number 94. <laughs> wow. Oh, uh, yeah. So that's, did that I do restorations um here's another cool pair they're a little bit bigger a little bit more flotation this one has the binding on it already hmm. so that one's ready to go guy in uh cross plains i think got those um so yeah and i got some world war ii snowshoes um that i restored up there those those little tiny oval guys. Oh, wow. That's great. Aren't they neat? So, yeah. So, this is, uh, that's what goes into making snowshoes. <laughs> that's amazing. <laughs> About how long does it take? How long is the process? Um, I'll, I, I don't really know because if I kept track of it, I would be depressed about how much, how much money I don't make doing it. Um, it's, it's, I, it's a hobby. Um, it probably takes me like two 45 minute shows. Um, <laughs> um so for a footbed and so yeah probably like three to four hours a shoe wow it's for the love like of that. it <clears throat> for the love of it yep. for sure then yeah okay yep. all right so, um so <laughs> thank you. well i was curious and that, that's thanks for showing us that i appreciate that um so when we talk more about the store in the winter time uh get back to the clothes a little bit what else uh what else do you guys sell what kind of products what kind of brands tell people about those yeah we're kind of big into merino uh, merino wool is our um our, our niche we started getting into it back in the early 2000s just because it was kind of coming on quick and everybody thought wool was itchy and nasty and, and uh, Reno's not like that. It's super, super soft. Um, it doesn't attract odor. So some of the old synthetic stuff that was really um, pretty famous like Capilene from Patagonia was kind of the big one. 
Um, it's great, but after a day or two, it just reeks. And um, it's synthetics tend to just, do, they, they, all, they allow the bacteria that, that cause odor to grow. Whereas um, Merino doesn't do that. So um, you can wear Merino for I mean, this thing. I've been wearing it for three days and it doesn't smell. Um, I might, but this doesn't. <laughs> But yeah, well, it's it's good. That's great. And then of course you guys have stuff for hunting and and you know that's come up real quick too. Um and then some other accessories and vests and all kinds of great stuff there. I just think, you know, with your your store, it's like you said, it's just such a it's it's so connected to the paddling and all of that. Um, what was this year like for paddling? Well, it started off horrible. Um, we had to cancel Kinucopia, our big our big show. The day before it opened and um that wasn't that wasn't something we really wanted to do uh but we had to and it was the right thing to do it was safe and um i thought okay well this will be a rough year um and then it wasn't uh as soon as people figured out that outside was the best place to socially distance they all went outside and they all socially distanced so uh they we we basically kept on trying to catch up to get product and um, sold through most of our inventory a couple times and um, did a lot of warehouse maintenance this fall because we didn't have any boats in the way. It was kind of nice. <laughs> so, um, but uh, yeah, product is, was difficult to get and it will continue to be hard to get. Um, most of our manufacturers are sold out through next August. So we are uh, front loading heavily. I know something else you guys do is, of course, you mentioned refurbishing some snowshoes. You, re you refurb other stuff and you sell uh, used products too. So that's another option for people, right? Yeah, we sell used. Uh, people trade in used canoes and kayaks. And um, sometimes we don't usually buy them, but once in a while, someone will come in and say, um, you know, my spouse died. I don't know what to do with it. Will you sell it on consignment? I'm like, yeah, sure, we'll take it. Um, um, and then I've got... Uh, well, we've, we've got a, a friend of the shop who used to work for us who does boat repair. And Jim is uh, really, really good. Um, so if you have a boat that needs to be repaired, he's the guy. He actually has more business than he knows what to do with because no one did small boat repair, right? You got to take it to, you know, a marina. And marinas don't like canoes or kayaks, right? So he just has this little niche and it's great. So he's really good at it. Um, I don't know if we have any used boats right now. A few, maybe. Oh, yeah, it's on that current current deal. You just, you just hovered over it. I should have them. Oh, we have a few. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> how did you How did you get into this? Because you mentioned you know you started working at the store and worked your way all up. I mean, it must have been you just fell in love with it, or, or how did that How did that happen for you? <clears throat> Interesting. Um, so I got into paddling as an undergraduate here. At UW. Um, went to New York for graduate school, upstate New York, and a friend of mine who lived here had moved there at the same time. He was a paddler, and so we started paddling together. And after graduate school, I moved back to Madison for my job, um, worked as a statistician for the state. And um, But I moonlighted in this little crappy little canoe shop down on Park Street in this old leaky building and uh, loved it. It's like I would go to work in the morning tired and leave refreshed just because, you know, you're around these people, this incredible energy, right? And everybody's excited. When they come in, in the shop, they're automatically friends, right? Because you know they're there for a reason. They're not, you know, if someone walks into Macy's, you have no idea why they're there, right? Could be makeup, could be a polo shirt, you know, whatever. Um, but when they walk into the shop, it's like they're there for a reason. And it's like, welcome, right? And it was the same way at, at this little it's it's now gone it was right across the street from the curve um where madison church supply was for many years and um a former owner built a new shop in Monona where we are now 94 and uh, he said i need another manager are you interested and i said yeah maybe i don't think so i've got a pretty good gig going at the state then i realized i wasn't growing so i said you know what i'm going to do this for a couple of years and see what happens and then they'll go back to being a geek again um, and, um, it didn't take, uh, I had to stay. I was, I kept growing and learning and, um, I'm addicted to that sort of growth. You know, I don't, I can't stand still. 
and with retail, it's a moving target. Nothing is ever the same, right? There's no, there's no business as usual, right? And COVID's a perfect example. It's like, yeah, we got it kind of, we got it running. It's pretty smooth. And then in drops this giant monkey wrench into the gears. And it was like, well, we get learn how to think again and uh, get together and get the, the war council together in a room, with all the upper management and said, okay, guys, what are we going to do? And we started writing on the whiteboard. We're going to do this, 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 and this. And either, um, I mean, the aviation analogy I use is when you're flying an airplane, the number one job is to keep it in the sky, right? And you land one of two ways. You land hard or you land soft. Um, you can't think about the landing. You're thinking about keeping the airplane going. So when, when COVID hit, we were like, keep flying the airplane. We'll either hit, hit hard or hit soft, but worrying about that doesn't really help right now. So all of a sudden, everything cleared up and we got to land the airplane nice and soft. So, um, but yeah, that's kind of my philosophy about everything is don't worry about what's going to happen in the future. You just have to worry about fixing the problem in front of you, right? So we'll just keep fixing the problems in front of us and whatever happens down the road happens. Mm -hmm. It's a great approach. Um, I want to go back to something you mentioned earlier, which was canoe copia. And I know you said how you had to cancel that, but um, you have already planned for 2021 and what this is going to be. And I think this really looks like a very interesting undertaking. So tell us a little bit about canoe copia 2021. Right. So um, canoe copia planning starts the day after the former canoe copia, right? I mean, it's, it's a, it's a year long planning event. And what we found is uh, we got up to some deadlines like in September because with the publication we put out, it takes two to three months to put together. Uh, we've got manufacturers that are investing in that and we didn't want to basically take their money and then not give them anything because um, that's not how I roll. And then we looked at the COVID and said, you know, it's probably not gonna be even if there's a vaccine, it's probably not gonna be safe anyway because it's not gonna be widely available. A lot of our customers in a high risk group. Um, and so um, said to a couple of employees, what if we went virtual with this? And what does that look like? We just envisioned what it would look like. And right now everybody knows, I mean, Facebook Live, Zoom, whatever, there's a billion platforms for doing this sort of thing. Um, but there's also people that do sort of a very robust, um, conference software where you can do conferences online right and uh, we found uh, we the six of them found one that works very well so people from all over the world literally can log in and watch our speakers the other cool thing about that that was that came to me after was like anybody around the world can present so i have a guy who's um gonna present a talk on venice from venice um I have a friend who's going to do a talk on Cornwall from Cornwall. So the carbon footprint of the show is actually lower because we don't have people traveling to it. Um, so it's just, it, it, it turned in from a, let's make this work to, this is a really good platform. This is going to be really fun. And so now everybody's getting energized about this and speakers that have never been able to come before because they live on the other side of the pond or, or whatever. Right. Um, then um, people can come from all over the world. So now if a guy wants to learn about canoeing or kayaking or what it's like to paddle in Venice and he lives in, you know, Northern Africa, you can log on and go to Kinecopia. So it's pretty cool. Wow. That does, I mean, I, I looked at that last night and I was like, well, this is a huge event. And then I thought, what are they going to do with this? This seems like a really interesting opportunity but like you said, it's opened the door to, uh, and we found that with other people that have done some big virtual conferences too, that it's kind of, yeah, there are some things that are, are, are a little different in terms of, hey, you don't have that personal interaction right in your in, in, with people. But like you said, and like other people have pointed out, you're opening the door to uh, people around the world, which is pretty exciting and fun. And, and our manufacturers are all in. They told me from the day I announced this, it's like, we're in, how do we do this? What do we do? So <laughs> these awesome. conference rooms have chat rooms, right? like video chat rooms it's like they can hold 30 people and you can just say you know when on the canoe is going to be in the vendor chat room from 10 to 11 o'clock you want to log in and talk to the manufacturer you can 
Um, we're going to have films from film festivals um, playing. So we have all these different rooms people can go into. The other cool part is we used to cram this into three days, right? So people would get there and it's like if the, the room they wanted to get into was full, it's like, uh, I missed that one. Um, or they had two competing speakers at the same time. So we basically said, um, well, who cares, right? This, this stuff's available for six months. So someone can come to for the weekend and watch stuff and then go back and watch it later or watch when they didn't get to see live. Um, so it's all gonna be recorded. And the cool part about this is when we go live again someday, hopefully in 2022, uh, we're gonna do the same thing with some of our speakers. We're gonna stream them live so people from all over the world can see them and we can save that content and show it to people later. So yeah, it started off as a, I guess we have to do this to make it work To This is a great model. I love it. I love the, you know, really kind of making the best of the situation, but also finding out future avenues to bring it to more people. That's fantastic. Okay. Bringing it back before we sign off here <laughs> to your, your store and what's happening here during this fourth quarter. Um, we know we get the winter gear, got the snowshoes. Uh, where can people find you? Are there any other products before we talk about that? Any other products you want to highlight during this, uh, this winter season coming up? Uh, yeah. Boats. Um, I had a guy come in yesterday and said, I want to buy a canoe. I said, when do you want it? And he said, next May. I said, you should order it right now. Um, because if you don't, you may not get exactly what you want. So we're actually taking orders and selling kayaks to people who want to be ready for the spring. That is something that's new just because of availability of product. And um, one thing we um, have a really good team. They're great people. They have the same vision and ethics that I do. And some stores are jacking prices. Um, because of availability. And I'm like, we're not going to do that. We're just going to keep going and do the right thing and take care of people. Hey, there's my staff. <laughs> so, yeah, so that's, that's our annual staff trip. Uh, this was on the Kickapoo River. And um, they're the best people in the world. I just love them all dearly. So that was, that was a great day. Um, anyway, sorry, you distracted me with my lovely people. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was too good of a picture not to show. It's just, yeah, no, I just, I just love them all. They're, they're, they are the best people that I know. Um, and that's kind of been my mantra all along is you hire really good people and then teach them what they need to know. And if you hire people that know things, they're not good people. You can't make them good people. You know, they're going to be whatever they're going to be. So they're all humble. They're all smart. They're all dedicated. They're all good people. And I love them all. Yeah, it's, uh, it's interesting that you, um, that you talk about that and kind of the people that make it up. Cause I think obviously, and you know, you're going to invest so much time into something as a workplace or a passion like you have be surrounding yourself with great people just really enhances that experience. I mean, that's what makes it right. So. Well, I trust my life with any of those people. <laughs> I mean, that's, and they know it. And they know that I would do anything for them too. Great. Oh, you found our you found our elf. <laughs> Did I? Oh, there you go. <laughs> so um, my wife and my family, we've been driving through, you know, holiday lights in, in Olin Turville Park since the kids were kids, and the babies, and now they're all old and grown up. And, <laughs> and I said, why don't we have a, a kayak in there? It's just, there's nothing in there, but just regular stuff. I said, we need a kayak. So uh, I contacted Kelly, who's the person in charge of this, and said, I want, a, I want an elf in a kayak. And she's like, cool. <laughs> <laughs> so it actually paddles. Um, this is a still picture, but it actually is animated. So I love our, I love our elf. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's fun. We're looking forward to that coming up too um, here. So you guys are at 220 West Broadway in Madison. Yep. People don't know. They can find you online, of course, as well. Rutabaga Paddle Sports. And um, the one other thing I wanted to come back to before we go is that was so interesting that you brought that up. Uh, you know, we've heard about supply chain issues and other things, shortages for people in various industries. But if you want your, if you want your boat for next spring, now's the time to order is what you're telling people, which is really important to know. Yeah. Order, buy, put on layaway. I mean, we people have purchased boats and said, I don't need it till March. I'm like, fine, I'll just put it in my warehouse with your name on it and you can come pick it up then. Um, cause we have plenty of storage, so there's no reason not to I have to worry about it, but yeah, it's, it's kind of fun. Um, I mean, it's, it's obviously good for our business when, when people, you know, buy things in the winter cause it's cold and we don't have the best 
the best sales. But it's also just nice to see people in the shop. You know, people come in and it's like, oh, I get to talk about paddling with somebody in November. That's great. <laughs> um, you also see on the page axes. Um, and and this, is, this is the thing where it's, it's good to be king sometimes. I really like axes and knives. I'm a I'm an artisan blacksmith and um, love making that stuff. So I like really high quality stuff. So we started bringing in axes from Sweden and uh, knives from Norway, and they're it's amazing gear. So it's something I'm really passionate about. And so if I'm not passionate about something, I don't do it because otherwise, why bother, right? So I love snowshoeing. I like cross country skiing but I'm not passionate about it. So I'm not gonna sell cross country skis in my shop. There are people that are really passionate about it and they can do it and they'll do it better than I can. So. Fair enough. That's Darren from uh, Rutabaga Paddle Sports. So again, rutabagashop.com. They're on Facebook, on Instagram. Of course you can Google them as well, Rutabaga Paddle Sports. Um, wow, Darren, thanks so much for telling us all about that. Best of luck this uh, holiday season and throughout the year. And we're looking forward to that really interesting canoe copia coming up next year that sounds wonderful thank you <laughs> take care best of luck there that's another um dane by local member feature here and we'll catch you again real soon to feature another one of our dbl members